watch Survivor And when the show ends You really wanna talk about it With like-minded friends It might be hard to find some But don't you shed a tear Check out the Purple Rock Podcast And this is what you'll hear John will make some dumb jokes And he likes to yell and curse And if they're not available The backup posts are so much worse Spend the whole time being jerks Telling you you're wrong And so we got this other jerk To sing you our theme song It's the Purple Rock Survivor Podcast Hello and welcome to the Purple Rock Survivor Podcast uh, We are here to talk about the 10th episode of Survivor 43 and with me this week fresh off of Thanksgiving dinner is Matt. Matt, do we have something to be thankful for tonight? Uh yes we do. Um is it Survivor? I don't know, let's find out. <laughs> uh, the the theme song doesn't uh, mention uh, him for a reason. All right, um let's uh get into this episode because maybe this episode gave us something to thank be thankful for uh because uh, I was wondering did you like it uh I did actually I, I did like this episode uh there were two sequences in particular that I thought they had a lot of fun with editing that made what could have been a fairly straightforward boot or you know like a lot more interesting um it also in a way may have given away the end game of the season uh but i guess we can discuss that part later but as to the episode i did like it did you yeah i thought this is actually a really good episode i thought yeah. um you know it featured some uh, good creative gameplay um some good challenges i thought it was well put together i think this is a a solid hour of television um you know kudos to all involved because yeah this actually this might honestly might be the one i was most excited about so far this season which in some yeah. ways i suppose is not a high bar but there's been other ones where i think we've spoken well of um and i, I think i don't it, think there's been bad episodes this no season. no there hasn't been any that we've spoken poorly of right just you know like oh that was fine this is not fine this was good Yes. I enjoyed it. Uh, and moreover, I feel it does portend uh, for good th things for, for the rest of the season, like the, the possibility of it, because I feel like um, we're now in the part of the season where they're going to do stuff. You know, the play yes. has started. I mean, we're near the end, so <laughs> it's going to happen at any time. <laughs> it would be now. But, you know, I feel like we're past all of the stuff that maybe was holding people back and, you know, Yes, you might say the edit may be pointing in certain directions, but I'll also add that I don't mind the directions that they might be pointing at. So, no. uh, yeah, I enjoyed the episode, and then we'll get into kind of maybe, I mean, there were a lot of different reasons. You hinted at some, but maybe there were, the first one was at the end, we did have a new decision. You said it could have felt like a straightforward vote, but I actually felt like it was kind of like a creative gameplay. Yeah. I think the editing ended up making it pretty straightforward. Like, there wasn't a lot of doubt in my mind what was going to happen at Tribal Council. Yes, yes, yes. By the time Tribal Council came, you know, you got the Tribal Council, it was pretty clear who was going home because I think it would have really been a betrayal of everything else they showed you in the episode to have it be anyone else. I guess the reason why I said it was straightforward was because you could also envision this being edited completely differently where instead of this being a very clever way to break a vote split, you just had it as, oh, this group of people decided to take out Noel. Yeah. And I think, yeah, what you said, it would be a betrayal. That was my one fear of doubt because like the show has done a few twists on us. Right. You know, yes. they don't reveal that Jesse has uh, Dwight's idol. They don't reveal when um, Cody got the beads until you know the last moment. So I'm like, oh, they better not do that here. Like that would just suck. Yeah. And not just yeah. because of like the outcome I was rooting for to happen, but because it's like you just showed us all this cool stuff and then you just pull the rope you know, rug from under us. But they did not. Um, uh, it was, uh, Jesse ultimately who is credited for it. And I think, uh, rightly, uh, for flipping the vote for Noel. And I guess the question is, cause like he had the choice to take out Carla, uh, who, you know, we think highly of who does have, uh, the idol and Jesse is pretty confident that that is true. Uh, do you think that Noel was the right move? I do. And the reason why I do is because I actually think at this point, Carla is a little more isolated than Noelle. I think you can look at Noelle. You can see the fact that she came to you with a plan to vote out someone else and had numbers behind her. She had 
you know, three or four people that were lined up behind her when she came to you with that plan. And you could look at that and think, wait a minute, taking out Carla doesn't necessarily have anyone else lying behind her except maybe me and Cody, my two best allies. So what does that gain me to take out someone who's more of a solo in this game rather than someone who might be leading what could be a counter alliance to me eventually? So this to me is taking that move before you have to take that move. Yeah, I think it was absolutely the right move. And unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of unique takes. Why I think that is because of the exact reasons that Jesse very clearly laid out in the show. I thought he did an excellent job uh, explaining yes. why. And I know there's some heat on, you know, uh, you know, social media that, you know, it's because, you know, he hates women or something. But I think he explained very specifically why this particular woman, as opposed to the other woman that that woman wanted to vote out, was his target. It's also the woman that's largely been his target or the one he's discussed through much of the season. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, the thing that you highlighted is the biggest one. If he does this now, Noel is set up very well. Yes. He doesn't want that. He wants Jesse to be set up very well. And I think taking out her now, you know, yeah, I think he might have gone a little far in tribal council saying that you now this move sets up the rest of my game. No. Um I don't know if any move does that anymore in Survivor. Um, but I think it did undo a major problem because yeah, Owen was absolutely on her side. Some yeah, you know, to the degree that Sammy is ever on anybody's side, he is now. Yes. And there would be less maneuverability and, you know, Noel just keeps gaining power. And, you know, so this, I don't feel like this was one of those instances that so happens on Survivor that like the first time somebody's mentioned as dangerous, which I believe was tonight, um, is the time they were voted out. I think Noel was dangerous. You know, she did have that move with Jess, uh, James last week, yeah. which, you know, I wasn't sure was a good move or not, but it certainly looked like something and it showed creative thinking. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, how if if you went against Noel in front of a jury, do you feel good about your chances of winning? Nope, <laughs> I do not. Um, I mean, look, I mean, I, I don't think juries purely base it. I think the whole sob story, you know, like appeals to the jury thing is a bit overrated in terms of uh, what people uh, think, you know, like, in you know, in terms of like, oh, this person's dangerous because they're you know, because they have such a compelling sob story. I think it can be overrated, but I'm also not sure because the ones who have the best sob stories always get voted out early. And the ones that stick around are the ones that even if they do have a good sob story, they're still kind of an a-hole. Um, so no one's going to vote for them. the for shine either. on their halo is taken down in some cases by the very act of still being in the game, right? Correct. Correct. And I think so for he, Noel, like people would want to vote for her. Yes. But she would also have game-based reasons for it. Yes. Yeah, it wouldn't just be because she got to the end. It would be because she got to the end. She made it happen. She made moves, you know, which I think she showed that she was capable of. And I think that's why she was dangerous. It wasn't just like, oh, this person is suddenly dangerous. It's we see on the screen why she's dangerous. She's arranging this vote. That is power in this game. If you can arrange a vote, that suggests that you have that you are dangerous. Yeah. And the vote before this, which Jesse wasn't a part of, but that, you know, it was her idea. And I'm sure, you know, I'm sure the, it got back to him. Yeah. The legend of Noel's move, because there yeah, are other people. Why didn't uh, they play the shot in the dark and all of that? And, you know, yeah. they just briefly like, oh, well, he was tricked. But I think, yeah, more explanation was probably given as to the level of that. So, no, I think this was absolutely the right move. And I think yeah. uh, your point about Carla is correct. Uh, what has Carla done of late? uh yeah. she's been pulled into you know either face saving or game saving votes at the last minute you know but for the past two votes she did not know what was happening until maybe an hour before tribal council yeah i don't Car think that necessarily means she's done but i do yeah. think that makes her a little less dangerous in this moment carla was a bigger threat basically before last week's episode or rather right before the vote that sent out James last week, because before that moment, Carla had what seemed like a very solid three and a solid three that had a lot of, you know, uh, pull within different groups between her, James and uh, Cassidy and taking out James makes that a two. And I, and you don't see a lot of people talking up Cassidy that much, so it's really what can who can Carla personally appeal to at this point 
instead of who can Carla and James appeal to. And I think that, so Noel, I think, was still thinking about Carla in terms of her dangerousness last week. But I think Jesse rightly saw that that level had changed with the vote out of James. Yeah, especially when you get Sammy agreeing to vote her out. You know, Sammy's yes. the guy who almost screwed things up last week by bringing yes. Carla in. Like, you know, you could have been afraid of the power that Carla held with uh, with Sammy. But yeah. now you can't be if he's on, on this plan. Um, and yeah, I don't know if Noel, uh, maybe Noel did do that because she, of course, uses Sammy as the decoy vote while also bringing in Sammy to vote for Carla. I'm kind of curious of who Sammy thought Carla was voting for in this scenario, but I am also kind of curious about <laughs> that too. Like if we're doing a split vote, does he, who does he think the split vote is for? But maybe he is unaware that a split vote is happening. Maybe but, he was told that Carla was throwing his name around. So he was like, oh, I have to get Carla up because she's coming for me. Yeah. Although, of course, we see Jesse get Sammy to admit that he's willing to do this. So let's talk about that because that's, yeah. So yeah, all in all, I thought, you know, his logic was sound in large part because he presented it very well to us. And I, yes. I really appreciated that from the episode. Yes. Um, I, I understand that the show more often than not wants to have the outcome of the episode be uh, some level of suspense surprise. I think that's the right decision by and large. Yes. But I think there's other times when you're going to create a more entertaining product by just laying it all out. And it helps when you can have a se sequence like they had tonight. Um, what did you think of the whole you know, checklist? Movie? I loved it. Like it was it was so much fun. It's nice to see the show do something that you haven't really seen before presented in this manner. It's not like other people haven't been like, this is what I have to do to get to get this vote to go this way. But the way the show did it with the checklist, the way they did it with Jesse showing each move and the way that Jesse was able to articulate all of these things so clearly and well and then demonstrate them. That's really fun. You see someone who's playing very well in that moment. You see someone who has ideas about how he should go about a vote and then execute on those ideas that's great that's what we want to see that's survivor you know and i think it would be some people will say why can't we do this with every vote you know one i think it would lose its power if we did this every week but two i don't think most people can articulate and execute this as well i think most votes come together so haphazardly near the end that you can't possibly do you know do this and they come together in a way that people like can't articulate how they're manipulating them it's just like yeah uh, I, I i know i can get this person to vote with me if i'm the last person to talk to them <laughs> you know yeah. that's not compelling <laughs> yeah and i think they took the cues from him right he sends yes. the line like i got my checklist and all this and while he's going through it He's not talking about future actions. He is talking no. about what he had done. And so, yes. he, uh, and in fact, I wonder if maybe like within that, he might have even given the examples. So and then, like, editors are like, check, let's grab that. Yes. Um, and it was, yeah, I bet that's what happened. Yeah. Probably. And it worked well. So, like, he's really explaining his moves well. And then the show really gives us, like, you know, by just giving that to us, and maybe we would have picked up on it for some, you pick up on little details. Like, when he's speaking to Gabler, he says, Cody wants to go after noel you know yeah. he doesn't put it out that that's his idea and that's his move yeah and and like well he's just playing I to love us. That you need to put it somewhere where they feel like this is their decision you need to guide them to that place and even just in that just like the very like well cody kind of wants to do this and that's like i'm not saying that's what we're gonna do what do you think and that yeah that right. was brilliant i i also love the cody bit because there is an air of uncontrollability about Cody that there isn't around Jesse. If Jesse said that, I think we should do this, people think – people know Jesse well enough to know, well, maybe I can convince Jesse of someone else. You know, I can put my foot down. I can reason with him. But Cody, they're like, oh, no. You know, if Cody wants someone, if I need Cody on my side, he's probably pretty wedded to that someone. It's hard to talk Cody out of someone in the same way that it's hard to talk Gabler into a different target if he has his mindset on someone, as we saw, you know earlier this season so you know you know it, it's good on two levels because one it gives jesse some plausible deniability you know gabler has a connection with cody that might be a little uh stronger than his one with jesse but also it's like you know cody is also more of a wild card it gives you you know it's like oh this is a harder thing to move off of you know maybe i should consider doing this because it would piss more people it would be harder for me to reason this one differently so 
I think a lot of what we got out of that, you know, sequence with Jesse is like the sort of thing you get from like exit interviews, like deep dives, yes. you know, you'd be like, oh, well, when you're executing a move like that, you need to have a reason why you're talking to somebody. It's like, and at first like, well, yeah, okay, obviously, you know, yeah. but then they show it's like, oh, I was just giving an idol. It's like, that's smart. Good job. Yeah. And it, and it's kind of now just makes me think like he's shown that level of creative thinking throughout, you know, when Cody yeah. is panicking that like he's surrendered his vote that needs to be happening in one hour because of the beads. He was just like, ah, just get him to put it on your hat. So yeah, he's a pretty bright guy. Imagine that. Um, yeah. you know, I, all season long, I've been saying like, you know, I, I really like Jesse because I can relate to him and how much he talks about his, you know, boring uh, life. Um, right. But I, you know, in saying that, like, he's like, yeah, I feel seen by him, really underselling him, who's like a PhD holder, <laughs> who's like, you know, you know, raised his life out from like, yeah. you know, juvenile detention, and I'm just me, you know, so I was like, we're not that much the same, I don't want to insult the man, I'm just saying <laughs> what he's talking now, how he would rather just hang out at home. Um, right. then I guess it's like, I get it, you know, not having gone a day without speaking to his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That part I get. Um, yeah. Actually, being an accomplished human being, I mean, I'm a dimwit with a podcast. So, <laughs> um, and I, I liked him throwing Sammy under the bus because, uh, you know, honestly, that was like Tony esque, right? When yes. Tony had to get um, the guy with the cowboy hat that we had to pretend was handsome, even though like he was largely balding. I can't remember. Uh, J. Uh, uh, no, not JP, not JT. Um. Oh God, I can't remember his name. Um, I think it was the guy he played his idol on at the merge. It was, was yeah, yeah, because he played his idol for him, and it, yeah, it, yes. But anyway, he That's gets right. him to say, uh, "Yo, maybe we do have to go after you." Or uh, Wu, LJ, LJ, LJ. I knew there was a J. There was there. Letters, I knew there was a J. There. <laughs> it was an initialism. Um, yeah, and just that. <laughs> All right, now I got him. And it's like, yeah. you know, you could just lie, but no, he actually got, you know, this is what he's saying about you. And that was enough. Yes. Um, so yeah, no, I loved it all. It was just wonderfully edited. That's what, what I was getting at. Like, this is a really well-crafted episode of television. Yes. Um, and then it helps that it's somebody that I was already rooting for. And now uh, having seen him make what I think to date has been the most impressive move of the season. Again, yeah. it's not a huge bar. A lot of the decisions have been very basic. Yes. Um, I'm all all the way uh, <laughs> Team Jesse. You know, sure. uh, I can flip if somebody like obviously uh, before now it was all about Carla, but like I said, you know, she's just she's just kind of been there the past two episodes. Yeah. If she does something later, I'll flip. I don't care. There's no loyalty <laughs> in this game <laughs> right now, Jesse. Jesse, because I think it was a, 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 the right move, well explained, well executed. Um, I agree. The flip side is uh, the way he was able to do this is because Noel again goes for the vote split and i don't know this might be hot take here it's certainly um recency bias because i did no research on this but i almost wonder if the vote split post merge is dead in the new era survivor like can it be done i don't know like uh i don't know like just in 41 there was a vote split um that shan and ricard executed right. but it was in it wasn't the big group it was the five five and it required the use of, you know, Shan's extra vote. And that's what, you know, they got rid of Nasir that way. Yeah. But, like, in the big groups, in the modern age, where everybody is kind of looking to make their own moves, we have a lot of independent players. And the way that like, everything is a lot more flexible, can you really ar arrange that many people to stay on? I don't know. What do, you, what do you think? So I got two thoughts. One is a slight correction. Um, Noel got five votes out of the eight people left. They didn't puncture the vote split by go but by by getting a plurality. They got a majority. So right. that was his first Jesse's first. Uh, yes, move. his first his first his first instinct was to keep it tight, just get a plurality and take advantage of the vote split. And I mean, we'll get into this later, but that might have been the superior move. But continue. Uh, it might have been, but he didn't. But then, but as to the general, more general question, I agree. I think the vote split is dead. The first couple of votes after the merch. Or like after the groups come together, because I guess like what is really emerge, and I think I think it is because it's too it, there's too many people pulling too many different ways. You can really only do a vote split when you have a super majority and everyone is used to voting together. And in Modern Survivor, you have at most three or four people of a group used to voting together, and then you have to rely on a totally different group 
to vote with you to also be used to voting together. And that's really hard to arrange. You have to build that trust, which first of all is very difficult in Modern Survivor anyway, because how many, you know, like alliances don't stay together. But yeah, I think you have to get to basically this point in the game until you can try a vote split. At like seven or eight, I think is where you might be able to try it, or in the small groups if you have, you know, the supermajority there. But I would not try it those first few votes after the tribes to get come together. Not anymore. Yeah. So we first see it fail uh, when Dwight went home. Yep. And all it took, you know, was Jesse and Cody flipping and then Sammy, yeah. you know, flips at the end. But it's just like you've created the scenario where instead of having a really strong numbers advantage, it's all single points of failure. And what you're doing right. is, and it's all done to prevent a different single point of failure and that's the that's idol right. and it's like i think it's easier to break a vote split than it is to correctly play an idol and like yeah the idol is dangerous but i think the split might be more dangerous than that i mean they would have had carla yeah. she did not use her idol yeah you know? um J james went home with the ability to steal an idol obviously yeah. there wasn't a vote split going on there but it's like I don't, I don't know like it used to be just this complete tried and true method or largely tried and true method of uh, busting idols and i don't think it is anymore which yeah, i, I think it might be exciting because maybe it brings some of the power back to idols because for a while there uh i vote supposed to become so rote that almost idols didn't matter so like well let's just be you or you uh and i don't I think we're there anymore i think that the biggest thing that broke the vote split was going from uh two tribes to three I think when you have two tribes, it's easier to do vote splits um, because you have a larger group of people that's used to voting together. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you get to a Pagong type situation in there. Exactly. And so then the vote splits are, you know, like it's like, OK, this is what my tribe has to do. If maybe someone from the other tribe is coming with us, then that means that you only have to arrange one or two and you and you can use their votes in a way that it doesn't actually screw you over if they if they mess it up i think with three tribes it's it's you don't have those situations anymore so it's i think it's harder to arrange vote splits um and once yeah. cassidy wins uh, immunity like this is how precarious the vote split is one mm -hmm. of the targets was part of it yeah you know? <laughs> um but you know i suppose if it worked you know it'd be like hey hat tip to noel you got you know sammy to participate in his own you know demise should carla play an idol um but it's like I feel like that's when they made the plan way before immunity um, because that, you know, they were at the reward. I understand that the conversation, but like after that, it's like, let's just make Carla feel comfortable, you know, like, or, right. you know. but like, and, and you, and you, if you think about it, like who, who else could they have put up there as a possible vote split person, you know, there, who else could you tell, you know, like, Oh, if it's not Carla and it can't be Cassidy, who's it going to be? If you put Gabler's name there, Gabler's going to freak out. If you put Cody or Jesse there, they have idols. You can't do that there. You know, like that's dangerous, you know? It, you know, so it has to then be Noel, Owen, or Sammy. And those are your closest allies. It's not going to be yourself, you know? And, and, oh, you know, so it's, yeah, you're, you know, put, put, making this a vote split is just playing with fire here. Yeah. And yeah, as you said, it ultimately ended up being, you know, a majority vote for um, no Noel, but it didn't have to be. And no. you know, let's like, let's get into it now. It, I think Jesse was right to try not to be. Uh, I understand, you I know, when so. it, when it's your neck on the line, as Carl was saying, um, yeah, maybe wanting a little bit more reassurance. Um, but I think her whole thing, like, oh, well, Noel's gonna flip her vote. I don't know. I think sometimes you can protect yourself against things that are unlikely to happen. And in doing so, open yourself up to blow up the plan because bringing any more people into it make could make the whole plan fall apart. Like if you're really Absolutely. nervous, Carl, may, Carla, maybe just play that idol. That's um, what I was going to say. You know, I was going to say if I was Jesse, I almost would have been like, look, if you're still, you know, it's like, I don't want to make this plan any bigger. If you're still nervous, you have an idol. Yeah, you know, now we don't know. Right. Let's not pretend we don't know. Play that idol. And then even, you know, like, you know, it's like even if they flip that vote, then Sammy's going home. That's still great for us. Yeah. Or, you know, and it's like, I suppose an alternative could be if you're really worried about it, I could see if I could shift the terms of the vote split. But that, you know, like so that she's voting for you anyway or whatever. Yeah. But 
Yeah, no, I think like that. She was overthinking that, and in doing so, like it worked out. Gabler did what they said. I think it opens up the fact that Gabler might now, you know, ruin things for Jesse down the line, and we'll talk about that a bit. But yeah, I, I mean, the other, but you know, I also don't really understand where Carla's concerns coming from because, I mean, you had four already. You had Cassidy, Cody, Jesse, and Carla. You know, they would have to completely abandon the vote split to even yeah, tie all that up. Four off. of them, yeah. Including yeah, and, and, Gabler. Right. And it's like I don't get that. Like I, I don't And then understand yeah, at that point, concern. like the worst is four votes you, four votes um whoever they were voting. Yeah, Noel, sorry. Yeah. You'll be immune then if nobody I know, snaps. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, you know, unless like what you know, like, I mean, you don't think like someone on Noel's side's gonna flip on her to avoid rocks? Like, I'm pretty sure they would. Like, Gable is not, I mean, I don't know. Like <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if we're going back to like, you know, uh yeah. Carla's not my best friend anymore, new best friend Jesse. Uh that right. that is right there. Like, you know, I think yeah, yeah. she made a, a mistake in this sense. Um, now the one thing I will say is this. If you want to work with Gabler at any point in the future, you you can't cut him out of a vote. He's the type of person that would hold I think that would hold that against you. Mm -hmm. So I think that that you know, like that might be part of the reasoning there. That Jesse's plan for the future is him, Gabler, and Cody go to the end together. I hate that plan. Yeah, uh, <laughs> because that's relying on Gabler. <laughs> uh, yeah. And here's the other thing I was thinking about. It's like, okay, Carla, you want another vote? Go get it. Why did Jesse have to go do that? I We're saving your ass here. Yeah. With some gratitude. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the other part of the flip or the vote split was Sammy. Yeah. Last week, um, there was some question. I don't know if you listen to the podcast when you're not on it. I don't know if you do when you are on it. Um, whether his move to bring Carly in last week was smart or not. And yeah, right. I kind of talked through it at the time. I was like, when I saw it happening, I thought it was absolutely not the right move. When it worked out, I had to reassess. But now that I've had even more evidence, <laughs> uh, nope, I don't think it was a good move. Um, nope. In the sense, like, yeah, okay, it worked. Carla did what he said. Yes. But it bought him apparently no extra goodwill from her, or at least none that he was looking to continue. Yeah, that, that's the thing. If you reach out to save someone, why are you not trying to work with them in the future? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I guess that's the thing. Like, it's so odd. Carla is such an odd choice for Noel to focus on, which I think is kind of what kicks this off. Because why, why focus on Carla or Cassidy? If you're Noel, why not try to pull them in and go after, say, jesse or cody yeah i think it's the familiarity with jesse yeah. and cody from bessie even though like what are you familiar with here them voting them... out everybody you're trying to work with yeah uh, that one neck of vote when you were ready to take them out but then yeah. they decided not to um uh, yeah i know i and i think it might have just been yeah and you know kind of going back to earlier it's possible noel is stuck with the earlier plans it's like all right it's take out yes. coco time and it's like well, they just took out two of Coco's. Yeah. What's next? Because yeah, when it, when it's you know Cassidy and Carla, it kind of seemed like that's where it's focused. And maybe it's because at that you know reward, there's no Coco members, right? Yeah. There's a Vessi, there's Baca. Yeah. Um, so maybe it was just like the easy one to describe. Um, right. It, I mean, it might be that Carla's the one that Noel has no relationship with, so yeah. she knew that she couldn't pull Carla in. But you would have think that Sammy could have because he did last week. Like, you know, you got to this might be Noel not having any trust in the rest of her alliance and only in, you know, the, you know, her relationships. And then that kind of leading to her downfall, too. But yeah, um, but yeah, but going back to reassessing Sammy. Yeah, no, I didn't like the move last week to tell Carla. And I like it a lot less. And in retrospect, when he hasn't, you know, used that relationship this week, like that should be something he was using, you know? Yeah, he takes this big risk to keep continue this relationship, or at least keep the possibility, and then he just burns it. You know, yeah, just because, I, I don't yeah. get it. It's it's just a it's a poor choice, and he to burns do something it because... that like he could have just like yeah, is it to keep the uh, Owen Noel relationship? Well, then you just should have never told Carla. Like you had the right. move in hand, 
And what's funny is that he burns it to stay with Owen and Noel. And Noel is like, I don't trust Sammy. Mm-hmm. So it's it's he's he is proving himself untrust untrustworthy on multiple levels because he's not really kind of assessing how other people are reading his game. He's like, oh, well, I have to stop flipping because he's learning that like he's getting perceived as a flipper. But then, but no one actually trusts him to then stay with it, and he's choosing the wrong side to stay with. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the big thing. Like you see Jesse bringing up with Noel as well. It's just yeah. like the the book is out, and yes. you know, good on him for getting that sense. Maybe somebody told him it's too late. I think. I mean, who I knows? So, the too. game moves around, so there might be opportunities. But that's all he gets out of that that's move it. to tell Carla. It didn't help him win the vote. It almost cost him the vote. That didn't right. help him maintain a relationship because he votes for Carla this week. So all he gets out of that is everybody going. We just can't trust Sammy. That's like right. he almost destroyed this move for us to do what? He's clearly, you know, scheming more than what is helpful to me. And you know, he could have gotten voted out this week as a result. So my initial feeling, like, why are you doing this? Um, that was the right one. <laughs> that Absolutely. was a, I think it was a bad move, and I think it probably undid any of the other good work he was doing. Um I agree. So then let's talk about Carla, because as I said, it's been two weeks of her just kind of getting by by the skin of her teeth. I mean, obviously, she wasn't going to get voted out last week, but she was going to be blindsided and losing her best idol. Uh, Sorry, best ally. I suppose the way that, you know, this one kind of worked out for a bit is it's like, you know, she probably could have used James here. Maybe she should have done something to save him. I think all she needed to do last week to save him was tell Sammy no. And that probably would have kept it because i mean she could have told james steal the vote yep so clearly she decided she didn't need james at the time i was thinking well this preserves a lot of potential relationships but what did that get her almost voted out of the game but for you know jesse's you know decision making which has i don't think any no well maybe a little bit i think he likes her but i think his main reasoning was i need to prevent noel from becoming too powerful Yes. So where do you think uh, Carla is at in the game now? I think Carla was in a position of power before last week. I think before the James vote, she was in a position of power. And she kind of ceded a lot of that power when she let that James vote go the way she did. And this week, it was kind of about survival. This week, she's just trying to get through to get to a place where the target is not necessarily on her again. She's not trying to put herself out there. She's not trying to steer the vote. She's trying to just fade a little bit into the background And I think the hope is that then she can emerge again later, that if she can survive this week, she can, you know, get a little deeper and emerge again with with another alliance and then, you know, assert more power as the game goes on again. And I think that's how you have to play it if you're going to let James get voted out. I think it was a complete mistake to let James get voted out. You had an idol, you know, he had a steal, an advantage. Um, You could have prevented that. Like that was preventable. And I think... uh, it was a mistake to do that because I think the people that wanted James out, one, James is great shield for her. It seemed like everyone was, you know, while people viewed them as together, they also viewed it as like, let's take James out before we take Carla out, which is great. That's a great position to be in. Let them try to take her, him out. But also, you don't know what the other tribe, the other small tribe was thinking at that point. Letting James go, it only it basically only buys you favor with three people. And if you had sided with James, you could have taken one of those three people out, you know, and and had James around. So it's like it it didn't make sense to me then. I still think it doesn't. As she's walking back to camp, she does not know if she has any close allies. That's right. She, we see her calling out to see if Cassidy is there. That's right. Yeah, it could have gone that she lost both of her allies by letting James go. And yeah, at the time I was like, maybe she was thinking this was like a coordinated hit, like that yeah. it was like, oh, they have to take out, you know, like Cassidy's going on one side, James is going here, and I'm going to be left alone. Yeah, which furthers the point of, well, then don't be. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, like you don't even have to play your idol. All you need to do is tell James they're coming for you. Yes. Yeah, you know, this whole steal and Owens plan, that's all a show. Let's do that's something. Right. And then, right. like, frankly, you don't even need Sammy's vote. You win 3-2 at that point. Yeah, um, yeah and at, at last week, I was just thinking that, well, this preserves different options. Obviously, Sammy's an option. Clearly not, right? She clearly, okay. whatever, you know, changes, and who knows, that guy might just flip with, you know, 
the wind, but she didn't preserve that relationship enough for him to not vote for her. Um, yeah, I, as you say, I don't know that she has a relationship with Noel. I don't know how much the relationship with Cassidy buys you. Do we know if anyone really likes Cassidy? I don't know that anybody. I don't think they it. do, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> I like, you know, you think maybe there'd be some like connection between her and Noel? Like they seem similar personality types. No, Noel was ready to vote her out. Yeah. Now, again, some people, you know, are able to supersede what relationships are, right? Jesse's voted out his, you know, island husband and his island mom. Like he don't care. He's yeah. here to get that money, baby. But, That's um, right. Yeah, I, I just don't know what Cassidy is bringing to the table in this two-person alliance. You know, Carla seems to still have this good relationship with Jesse, and this speaks positively of where Carla's going. You know, while you know we finish t- documenting where it hasn't been, Gabler comes to her after yeah. this plan and puts the warning about Jesse and Cody, which was really interestingly put into the episode, and you know maybe it was some small attempt to obscure the vote like oh does he mean now but i don't know it felt pretty clear that he does not mean now no it It felt pretty clear yes i agree and it seemed like it's setting up a next storyline uh we also get jesse and cody you know being you know the word i was sitting on top of the world nothing could ever possibly go wrong uh which i I did not like (laughs) that's like it's a little humble stay worried about every single one of these people um so that carla got that from gabler speaks well that like you know some of the social gaming that she's been doing but she's she's lost a lot of power of late and it hasn't helped reduce her target like they were still coming for her this episode yeah Uh, yeah and and that's why i think that was such a mistake because she had such a target letting an ally go letting someone who could have been an even bigger target go is a huge mistake i mean this episode she played it fine she's in survival mode I have no problem with the way she played it. And frankly, I even think it may have been a good decision to try to get Jesse to do all the work because you want him to have a big target. You want you don't want you to have a target anymore. So but um but yeah, no, so she needs a shift to happen. And maybe that is Gabler, you know? And I and you know, so that's the question. Is Gabler playing well? think he's not playing badly you know the whole time i've been like oh maybe sammy's the best on baka and i think that was true then yeah but he might have been passed by gabler because nobody's coming for gabler people are trusting or wanting to work with gabler which was the thing that i believe with you i said like don't do don't do you can keep him around let him ruin other people's games i'm now reassessing that too this has been a whole episode of me being like i guess i was wrong before um and it's fine you get more information you you know you you reevaluate that's how it should work right um i think in the modern survivor you just can't afford to keep an agent of chaos around because you never know when you might need somebody for numbers yeah it's easy to say gabler's playing poorly because i think it's pretty clear if gabler got to the end he would not get votes to win Correct. But that doesn't mean he's playing poorly in terms of that he's ineffective during the rest of the game. Because I don't think he is ineffective. I don't think he has the power to drive votes as in pull in other people to his side, maybe one or two, you know, like, you know, like maybe he could pull in an Owen if, you know, basically by saying like, hey, Owen, things are going this way. But for the most part, he is someone that you come to with a plan and then he either endorses that plan or not. But he's also someone that's made himself kind of indispensable to a lot of people's plans. Yeah. And that's, you know, you don't want Gabler to be indispensable to your plans because the thing about him is he's not shown himself to be as nakedly ambitious as Sammy is with his flip flopping, but he's still flip flopping a lot. And he and it's, you know, you probably have less of a sense of why he's doing it than why Sammy is. Yeah. And where I think it becomes really dangerous is everyone's underestimating him. They're not even worried like, oh, no, he's part of our plan. And that's it. Whereas, like, I think he's more perceptive than everybody gives him credit for. And look, man, if you were around at the beginning where, you know, he pulled off that dumb move at the you know, the first one or like, I'm not going to use my idol, but I might use my shot in the dark. Um, It's just I get it. 
it took mm-hmm. me a while to see him a different way too and then you know the first few days he also just seemed like completely waylaid by the game but like from the merge on obviously the ellie thing felt weird but he got what he yeah. wanted um mm-hmm. he people keep talking to him like he's unaware yes he is not you know, no, he, he is not he, he knows what jesse and cody are doing he says what jesse needs okay i am voting for noel and it's like oh yeah his word is oak um but he's going to do what's best for him. And the tough thing is you can't anticipate what Gabler thinks is what's best for him. Now, ultimately, as you say, I don't know that it will help him win. I think it will help him continue in the game. I think it will help him disrupt the game. But the problem with everybody underestimating you is it's hard to change their minds when you need them to estimate you. Um, Ken is the classic example for millennials (laughs) versus Gen X. Well, I mean, think of Mike last season, even. Yeah. That's like everybody point. thought he was, you know, my word is oak type and, you know, you can trust him. And then when he tried to get to the end of the game, nobody wanted to hear anything differently. Now, yeah. Sadly, he also didn't want to say anything differently. Yeah. Um, but it can be really tough once you get that perception to ever flip it around. I think, you know, uh, oh, blank right now, she won the season last year and she was super fun and awesome. Uh, Marianne. Marianne, thank you. I knew it like five minutes ago. She uh, was underestimated, but she also yes. had enough things and skills to flip that perception before she got there. And it still ended up being a yes. long tribal council where if Mike had given people something, he might have won, right? Yeah, I think that, yeah, no, you might be right there. And I think it's the same with Gabler that like, I don't know if at any point he can like, you know, really switch people's perceptions. He can use their perceptions of him to continue to you know to you know play against their and even like in that discussion with Sam, Jesse, you know he he seems like he's still playing that role. Okay, well that's what you say. Then you must be right. He knows what's going on there. I don't know that it's going to help him win at all. But at the very this least, is, he's yeah. winning a bit more of my respect. This is why it's hard for me to see Gabler going home before say final five. Because the perception of him on the island is he can't win. Yeah. The problem is he's still dangerous to your plans, but that perception does not seem to be there for people. Mm-hmm. And so if that perception isn't there for people, they don't have a reason to vote him out. And the reason why I say final five is because that's a point then where you might have enough people left, but you almost have to, if like, you know, the immunities fall the way they do. Yeah. And plus maybe he's like really good at fire. I don't know. Maybe he's really good at fire and that, and that spooks people. Yeah, absolutely. But I think he's someone that a lot of people look at. And I think they think I'd love to sit next to him at the final tribal council. And maybe you do, but that, but thinking that way always underestimates the difficulty in getting to that point with this person. Yeah, at this point, I feel like if Jesse doesn't win the season, it will be because of Gabler, and maybe because right. of what they the story they just introduced, and he's able to flip it on him, you know, showing the danger that Jesse or Cody is. Maybe it's just because Jesse keeps saying that like oh, Gabler's in his numbers, and I'm all like, no, 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 don't right. depend on him. Find something else. Yeah. Um, and so I could see that blowing it up for him. And that's kind of what I get it. Like, I think he is a dangerous player in ways that like, I don't believe Sammy is. I think people kind of got Sammy figured out now. I think you're right. No, I think you're right. I think Sammy is more transparent. I think, uh, and yeah, you're right. People haven't figured out. Whereas Gabler. I mean, they might not have figured out that he's 19 because he's <laughs> very 22. That's right. But, but they think they've all figured out like what he's doing here. You can't trust him. He's going to flip. Whereas Gabler, they trust him. And yep. he's going to flip. Um, so Gabler isn't the go to the season. Who is, if anybody? Might be Cassidy. You think? Why is that? Uh, I think Cassidy is similar to Gabler. I don't get any sense that she's going to be getting votes at a tribal, final tribal. And she has even less agency than Gabler has seemed to display in terms of uh, her ability to swing votes. Um, You're talking about but she took down Ryan. The- she took down Ryan. I, there honestly might not be anyone. The reason I say it's Cassidy Owen. is this- The answer is Owen. You've just forgot he's on the season. Do you realize that the only correct vote that Owen has cast since the merge was the one that he has pretended to not have cast? Yeah. Um, well, but no, but here's my, no, here's why I don't think it's Owen. Because 
I I think you're right that Owen is inept. I think Owen is the worst player on the season, but I don't think that necessarily makes someone a goat because again, perception matters. And I think Owen weirdly is perceived to be above Gabler in terms of his gameplay, even though that is so wrong. That is just totally incorrect. Yeah. See, I just hope now, like the fact that Owen's just flailing and failing all the time, the whole idea before like three votes ago when he needed to win immunity is dangerous. Yeah. Like, Man, that guy's not dangerous. What no, is Owen going to do? Oh, yeah. Frankly, if we want this vote to succeed, we just need to make sure Owen is voting the other way. And it will. <laughs> is yeah. Owen the beaten? Um, yeah. But yeah, like he just as long as he's on one side, that side's going to lose. And yeah, like I wouldn't, I, yeah, you know, I think, yeah, you know, and this is me, the guy watching the edited version of this competition months after the fact. Gabler, much more dangerous. Sammy, also kind of dangerous, but, you know, people have figured it out right now. Um, yeah, I think Cassidy could also be dangerous. Um, I think because people will respect her, like she gives an, a level of intelligence. I don't think oh, anybody has respected Owen besides James for the, like the entire game. Like even over in Baca, he was kind of the one they're like, ah, whatever, that guy. Um, so, and <laughs> we were talking about jury. The fact that, like, you know, he got into, like, this verbal spat with one of the jurors uh, yeah. probably doesn't, like, who's voting for Owen? Maybe I'm not, I mean, yeah, like, I, I, like, I, guess I hear what I'm... you're saying is that maybe people don't realize it, Yeah, but that guy has just done nothing oh, and I has agree. proven no ability to do anything. If yes. Owen's coming after you, you should feel pretty comfortable. No, I mean, and that's, I mean, that, like, my point is that Owen's inept. Owen's yeah. bad at this game. He's the worst player at this game that is still left in this game. Cassidy's better at this game. Gabler's better at this game. But there's this weird, you know, sense that I've gotten. And maybe that sense is no longer there from the other people. But that Owen, that where they think that Owen is better at this game than he is. And, it, and you know, and it probably comes from James from a couple episodes ago yeah. where he's aiming for Owen because he thinks Owen's dangerous. You know, and we haven't heard people talk about Cassidy that way. We haven't heard people talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, Gabler that way, even though, like, Gabler is proven to be really dangerous to people. And and again, this is where, like, you know, like, definitions of GOAT matter, you know. And for me, a GOAT is someone who is not dangerous and is controllable. And so Gabler's not a GOAT because he's not controllable. Um, and I, I think Owen has a perception of dangerousness. So he to me is not a goat um i'm not sure there is a goat this season yeah. i guess not a so, true one getting back to jesse's you know this vote will set me up the whole way uh, what a part of it is like owen is just begging to be somewhere to just get yeah. something right once if yeah. i can decouple him with noel he'll vote with me because i'm the only one asking at this point yeah. so in that sense then he would become a goat who do you think that Jesse would think is thinking like, okay, so where are we going next time? Like, is he thinking Sammy? Is he thinking Owen? I, think I don't he's think he's thinking, thinking Gabler. Carl. What? I think he's probably thinking Carla. I think he needed Carla to stick around so that Noel wouldn't get the power from her being around. Mm. But I think that after that, it might be like, okay, well now she's the most dangerous. And See, I think he's thinking she should Sammy. feel most comfortable. Um, I think he's thinking Sammy. But, Sammy would yeah. be the easier one. But, you know, I could just see, like, yeah, because part of it's, like, I know where all the advantages are. But maybe just knowing that Carla has it is enough. Yeah. Uh, because if you vote her out, that does create an unknown uh, because they will probably replace it. Yeah. All right. I'll, I wanted to talk briefly about, you know, about Noel winning the reward challenge, largely because I thought that was just truly awesome. Like, yeah, honestly, like, no, me too all-time great survivor moment i don't really have a hot take or anything like that i'm glad like you know there was some concern as it was happening it's like the show trying to like do a every moment inspiration moment well, that isn't but instead no it just was a full-on badass inspirational moment and i i really appreciated that yeah. they showed us the struggle to the point where yeah i think some people fairly good-hearted people it's like oh this isn't fair uh did they not you know consider this you know for that but i think the whole this whole season they haven't made challenges easier for her the whole point of what noelle has been doing is that yes she is you know disabled but capable 
you know, she's a world class athlete for one thing. But yeah, it's like, yeah, so yeah, it, some of these things might be harder for her, but she can do it. And the fact that, yeah, she did it all and then won, like, I, I you get the sense from some of the competitors that some of them were like happier for her than yeah. they were even for themselves. And I certainly was like that. I was, uh, yeah, I don't have another take. I thought it was really awesome, and I'm glad I saw it. No, I, I do too. And I think they were happy for her because it was a reward challenge. So it wasn't like she was taking yeah. something from them. I also think it contributed to her being a target this episode. Oh, because for sure. they had just seen that. 100%. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, this is a great story she has. She's dangerous. Maybe we should take her out right now. She could I mean, win yeah. any challenge because anybody can this season. But we just Absolutely. saw something that, like, should have totally prevented her from winning. Yes. She won. Yeah. Was, yeah. No, I, I can understand. Well, all of them were like, man, I'd vote for her. After yeah. seeing what I just saw, I would vote for her. So she's got to go. Uh, <laughs> Did you know that we haven't had anyone win uh, more than one immunity so far? Yes, I believe because I've seen the chatter. I think there's been like five different winners. Yeah. If you include Noel's reward win. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I suspect well, I was... as we go on, like there'll be like a multiple winner. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, so Cody has won a reward and an immunity, okay. but that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like every other solo win has, you know, has been a different person. So, Is Sammy, the only person left that hasn't won. Uh, so Gabler's won, Owens won, Carla's won, uh, Jesse, Jesse hasn't won. Sammy and Jesse. Okay, for a second run there, I was thinking he had, but I, yeah, no, he has not. I no, Sammy, sure Sammy that. has. Uh, yeah, Sammy and Jesse have not won. There we go. Uh. So. So yeah, I thought that was just really uh, cool in the reward challenge, uh, the immunity challenge. Let's let's talk about the immunity challenge. Oh man, great editing there! I love the montage of things just falling and the sound effects. That is great survivor editing. That was so much fun. Yeah, uh, it should be noted that I mean, while they may have boosted it, those were metal t tiles. They were yes. not wood, so it wasn't full fully work. I am um, so great idea even to create you know change the, the 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 sonic dynamics yes of the thing because yeah the flanking <laughs> it was yes. so satisfying and frustrating like just oh, wonderful like that's what i was getting at just a wonderfully <laughs> produced episode of television yeah the jesse yes. sequence but this yes. one just uproariously funny also does a really good job in conveying the level of frustration with that challenge yes yes because, yeah, that's got to be one of the more frustrating ones just because it takes a while to build it up high and just like one slight misstep and it's all and you got to do it all over again. Yeah. You know, I suspect they've changed the rules of that challenge because in the past, sometimes people would like get their stack in the middle of the bar mm, so that you yeah. don't have to keep reaching so far. I'm guessing that nobody did that. So I'm going to assume that they were told they're not allowed to. I'm, I'm pretty confident grabbing one at a time is a rule. Yeah, and then I bet you know you can only go from platform to platform because you did see sometimes Gabler had like a stack on his second platform, but never in the middle because yes, there yeah, you know, you're there, you're there, and then just an extra twitch and reach. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, so bravo, bravo show. Yes. Um, kind of after an episode like this where you see you know wonderfully edited sequences, really powerful moment with Noel. Um, you know, really you know interesting strategy with Jesse. Um. Does it change where you're at with the season? Not really. Um, I'm still, yeah, it's it's kind of mid-tier Survivor for me. It's not bad. It's um, like, it's, I think it's like, it, like right now, I mean, look, it's not done. I, I don't no. know exactly where I'd rank it. I'd have to look at my list again, but it's probably right in the middle. It's probably like in those like, like around like 20 to 25. So yeah. it, it, it's hard to imagine a scenario where it climb out of the middle, especially because you know, as the show gets bigger and longer, the middle gets bigger as well, right? Yep. Um, you know, and like it's hard to. I think it's. I think we could almost certainly rule out that it will end up being a bad season. Um, I think so. Yeah, I, I think that's very unlikely at this point. I'd say probably the most likely scenario that would make us feel negatively, like true negative, as opposed to you know ambivalence. Would be Cassidy winning with an invisible, you know, somewhat invisible edit. Yeah, that um, would be very frustrating. Yeah, not for it's, it's, her it's winning. 
Right, exactly. But for the way, but for, for continuing the choice this. of making her such a you know non featured character, right? Right. Um, I know nothing about Cassidy. I know nothing about Cassidy. The only thing I know is I don't think the other people there like her, but maybe they do, and I just don't know that because I know yeah. nothing about Cassidy. Yeah, we know that. Yeah, she disliked Ryan, and then we got yeah. the personal segment last week about like her, you know, dead sister, which was... I had already forgotten that. So well, that's <laughs> I mean, again, and if we're going to the you know really unfair ranking of sob stories, that might have been the second most powerful dead sister story of the season. So. Yeah, because uh, yeah, Ellie already had one. Um, yeah, no, like that would be the only one that would leave like a, a bad taste in my mouth. It's like, really, this is what I we think. do show. Yeah, um, I mean, I th- I think there's other. I mean, like, I would say there's other wins that would be kind of like inexplicable, but I don't think they're like Owen's not going to win, so I don't no. have to worry about ex- explaining like, that. You know, somehow it's... Gabler wins, and it's like I guess that's why no. he was a featured character. You know, yeah, I, I don't think, think I think the happen. reason he's a featured character is pretty obvious. He's a kind of a character. Right. Um, and he's a character that's, I think, causing a lot of chaos and yeah. being central to a lot of votes. I mean, like, I guess Cody could win, but, you know, that would be kind of funny in a way. I yeah. And I think happening. it would, I don't think so either. If that did, though, it would probably you know, come off of a lively, you know, final few episodes. Yes. We, we're yes. at 10. So there's probably, what, three more left or so? Uh, if we have seven people, no, we only have seven people left. There might be as few as there's probably three more. It'll probably we'll probably have a final five. I mean, yeah. but maybe it's only a final six, so then it would be two more. So I feel like thirteen episodes is what you know. This is what you come to this podcast for. We don't even know how many episodes is a year. Whoa, well, the show is. Th- yeah, that's true. Um, though the first like, episode like was a double, so reunion. maybe yeah, the I'm first sure. episode was a double. So I wonder if that might take one yeah, away. Like a one but, two. Yeah, yeah, even though it's not counted that way in the show guide, it's it, you never know. Um, yeah. but but yeah, like, I don't think Cody is winning, but you know, he's been an established character throughout that if like suddenly it becomes the Cody thing, especially if like say Jesse falls, um, I think that would be like an interesting path. I don't think it would be just yes. suddenly how the hell did that happen? It would feel like a part of progression, much in the way that Marianne's in, ended up feeling yes. like a progression. Right. Yeah, and like it, if Cody, if Cody won, I think it would actually be in more interesting Endgame than perhaps if Jesse won, <laughs> because yeah. Jesse's such like to me such the front runner that it's you know like him winning is kind of like okay, this is what we're expecting to happen. Yeah. Whereas like a Cody win would be like oh something in- something different's going to happen. Hold on a second here. So. Yeah, I feel like a Jesse win would actually feel pretty satisfying for me, and not I just you know again you know I'm a wife guy I get it. Um, no, no, no. He, uh, he, I've always appreciated cerebral players and victories. They're not that you know they're not super common. No, I don't think any type of winner is super common. But you know like a Yule and Earl like those are my some of my favorite uh, you know players ever and seasons that I appreciate more. So that might elevate this to like you know the higher end of the middle should he continue to do stuff like tonight and that's the one thing like where tonight makes me feel good about the season is i feel like there's there's room now for maneuvering yes we're well, past again carla i think still has moves and if she were to win i'd be really excited about that yeah um but i feel like there's stuff in there and i think there's also kind of like players and you know pawns still left to go whereas everything before this was kind of like what's the easiest thing in some yes. ways, I you know I'm I I'm not even sure if I fault the players for that so much as maybe this is a reaction to the new game and it's just yeah. Like, but I think we're past that. We know I'm pretty sure we've know we've been told that they're not going to do the do or die. So that's nice. Oh, that is very nice. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sad that you know I can't possibly see probability fail again because for me. <laughs> I mean, again, I don't know if it would, right? So it maybe right. it's best that it's just, you know, yeah, the go lucky hole problem out. never right. paid off. Um, but yeah, but I think like there's hopefully fewer like show manipulations beyond the ones we already know about, you know, the yes. fire making and all of that. Right. Um, which means uh, I think now we can see a few weeks of gameplay that will lead mm-hmm. to a winner that will feel like they did something to get there. I don't know that anybody now can coast. And if anybody can, it'd be like Jesse. And that would be as a result of like the gameplay he did here. And I guess even earlier, right? Like when he made the move to flip and get rid of Dwight, like there would be enough. Jesse did that stuff as opposed to just say hey, the, the, the best player was taken out every week until we finally got a winner, which I suppose right. could still happen. But 
I don't know who that winner would be in that case. I guess maybe Cassie. Like there is some people saying that like you know she's been getting the the questionable confessionals. And I, I don't track that stuff because I don't I don't I don't care <laughs> that way. Right. Uh, clearly, um, it has been an indicator in the past, and the, and the type of indicator that I will just not notice at all. So I'm not going to say anything now. Um, <laughs> The last thing I'll say is you people aren't crazy because, uh, you know, I've lived through Michelle and Erica. Um, I don't even know where I was going with that. So I don't know, I don't your, know your thoughts of where the season, any other thoughts of where the season is now and how you see it going? I mean, I, I think I've hinted at this pretty strongly. I think Jesse's just the clear front runner. I really do think he's winning. Um, but I, I do think you're right that the season is now in a place where I think people are going to either make moves or going to try to make moves. And the reason why I'm totally okay with Jesse winning is because he has ammo to try to parry people making moves. Like if Gabler and Carla come at him, he has an idol they don't know about. Like yeah. it would be pretty cool to see like a majority form, try to vote him out, him play an idol and vote out someone in return. That would be pretty cool. We haven't seen that in a while. It feels like, um, you know, successful idol plays yeah. like mind boggling and- stuff. And it would be such a nice like coda on the like, the story of the the, the post forty, and yes. that the the key was the one guy who kept his mouth shut about something. And obviously, That's like right. Marianne has that, but yes. in the sense of like I had this thing he didn't know about. She didn't use it. She didn't need to, yeah. right? So if you like, he's able to like save his game and turn it a bit based on the thing that he kept secret. That would be pretty cool and satisfying. Yeah, yeah, and you know, so I think that. I think Jesse will win uh, at this point, though. You know, again, I'm not writing off Carla yet. I think that she's the next most likely option. Um, I think anyone beyond that's unlikely. Um, But, I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Frankly, uh, the past two winners are people I thought were unlikely at this point. So um, by the time we got to the finale, I thought they were a little more likely. But by this point, I thought they were unlikely. but yeah, I, I think the season's in an interesting place. I think that because of all the safe moves, you're in a place now where you kind of don't have any one big alliance. Like, I don't think that this group of five is solid together. I see it as really two groups of two and Gabler, <laughs> you know? And I and that doesn't mean that necessarily Gabler will gravitate to one of those groups of two. Maybe he'll gravitate to Owen and Sammy and try to do something with them. Which would be freaking wild, but like, I don't know what's going on there. You know, like it's, it's Gabler, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to predict him. And I mean, um, he does know them best, right? They, you know. He does know them best. So like, yeah, what if, what if Gabler is talking to Carla about getting Jesse and or Cody out? And he's like, look, let me go get, you know, Sammy and Owen, you know, and then that's a new five for a week, you know, like Gabler could use those two to break up the other pairs of two. And then be like, hey, I got my group of three here. It's me, Sammy, and Owen. <laughs> and like, yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, they do that. But Jesse, you know, who's shown to be somewhat, per- you know, fairly perceptive, sniffs it out. He and Cody both have idols, right? So, That's right. It, yeah, so, that could be really cool. Um, yeah, I'd say Owen's my guy. I'm going to form a plan. If that, that like they form a plan that involves Owen, I'll be like, I'm all right. I feel pretty good about my chance. Yeah, it's like, it's like, okay, Jesse's going to dodge this bullet. Yep, uh, we're yeah. We're good. No, I mean, I mean, and I think my point really is that I think there are some very entertaining ways the next couple weeks yep. could go. And, um, you know, and I think that, you know, this was a really good episode. I think you're right. It was the best this season. I think we might see that continue in the next couple of weeks, or at least the possibility of it is there. I, because I don't think that's going to be the safe votes, you know, because I don't even know what the safe votes are right now. So, hey, if you're listening yeah. to comments, uh, here's a question to kind of debate around Has there been a less effective player, uh, you know, post merge <laughs> or frankly, all season? in the history of survivor than owen like even like <laughs> michelle at winners at war who kept being on the wrong side i feel like she had gotten something under her belt by now maybe like teaming up with nick i mean again maybe it wasn't by now maybe that came a little later but like his two successes was voting mariah out in the very first vote yeah which i feel like he was the last person to know about and then voting for uh what was it um janine because he's told by gabler at the very last minute 
but then telling everybody afterwards that he had voted for Ryan and then being very angry about not being told. That's, that's the closest, besides winning immunity for himself, that Owen has come to success in this game. Yeah. That is strikingly bad. Yeah. <laughs> like when you see like... Uh, that's the sort of thing like yeah you could be on the wrong side of the vote a lot in the past back when it was tribe versus tribe but this is a fluid game where numbers are rearranging and all that it doesn't matter when the music stops owen never seems to have a chair to sit on yet he's still in the game <laughs> yep this is true i mean uh, but look people like that are people that get kept around in the game because they're not dangerous to you yeah so. if, if he makes it to the final and somebody comments, it's like, hey, he got to the final, didn't he? He survived all those votes. Whatever social media app is, exists at that time, I will block you on. Getting <laughs> there as a result of this level of ineptitude is not a signal that you are a good survivor player. It is the opposite. We ha All you're doing is providing more evidence of how bad a survivor player you are. Your continued existence in the game is not proof of such things. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I don't. I wasn't even planning on doing that rant, but it just kind of started to think about. It. So, if you have examples of players that have been less effective than Owen uh, in Survivor history, uh, let let us know. Um, I'm sure there has been, and it'd probably be a funny list of like, oh yeah, that guy sucked. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, what I'm like, saying let's is, let's remember Owen some is guys. in that company. Yeah. And it's important for us to know that because I think people haven't been talking about it enough because he seems like a good dude. Uh, look, all I'm saying is, you know, let's do the uh, survivor equipment uh, equivalent of let's remember some guys. So let's, let's remember some guys. All right. Um, anything else? That's it. All right. You can sh um, leave those comments. Uh, probably the best place, the most secure place, the place that we will know will exist is at purplerockpodcast.com. Um, Twitter still exists. It, it survived the start of the World <laughs> Cup. That's maybe more shocking. It's uh, it's the Hanukkah the miracle. Record. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so if you want to leave comments, um, we're at Purple Rock Pod. I'm at Purple Rock Andy, and you are Purple Rock Matt. Apparently, we just got approved to join Post. I don't think we're doing going to do anything there. But if that's the winner, that's the the, the 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 thing that will be the replacement. One day you can find us there. I don't even know what our username is. Um, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe wherever podcasts are. You, hopefully you already do that but seriously if you are not if you are relying on a potentially failing social media thing to let us know when they're new episodes i would recommend adding stop us. yeah, yeah I, I would recommend adding us via some other form of audio subscription service uh all right i think that's enough so i'm gonna hit some theme music okay